what God said to a general. He said, Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. With the Lord thy God. With the Lord thy God. He is thy God. He knows you. You know him. He has called you. You have responded. But now as a walk was seen, children of Israel, thou shalt be perfect. He required that from the men. Required that from the women. He required that from everyone that he had called out of Egypt. Thou shalt be perfect with thy God. Job chapter 1. We're reading from verse 8. Job chapter 1. Reading from verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, as thou considered my servant Job, as thou considered my servant Job, here God was bragging on Job. And he said, he is mine. He has relationship with me, number one. He has fellowship with me, number two. And he has faithfulness towards me, number three. That this Job, he was a man that what the Bible had not been fully written. He didn't have a pastor. He didn't have an encourager. He didn't have someone to be propping him up every time, encouraging him, exhorting him, advising him, counseling him. Job, you can try. Job, you can try. You can try him up. No, but personally by himself. You see, we have turned the Christianity into a kind of a comrade community thing. And I'm waiting. It's like even if you have the food on the table, you can't eat. Why are you not eating, my friend? I want to see the love of the people of the church that they will come and help me pick up the spoon, help me pick up the knife and put the food in my mouth. We can't do anything for ourselves anymore. We can't pray for ourselves we can't read the bible ourselves we can't encourage ourselves we can't counsel ourselves we can't say i'm getting up i'm moving on and we can't even do restitution by ourselves you, you stole money from another person and the lord is saying make right away yes lord i know i will do it but i'm waiting to see the gs what i'm waiting to see the gs for because my coordinator told me my pastor told me every form of every form of restitution you must see the gs where do you read that in the Bible? You cannot do anything for self anymore. Zacchaeus did not wait for Peter. Zacchaeus did not wait for Philip or anybody. He said, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything, my wrong accusation from any man, I restore him fourfold. Here is Job without any counselor, without any advisor. The Spirit of God ministering to him. And he following the Spirit of God, and God said unto Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? It was not a copycat. It was not like so and so is doing it, why don't I? If so and so is permitted to do that, why not I? I went to a place. And I saw that as a member of Deeper Life. And she's accepted as a member of Deeper Life. And when I watched very well, she had a little earrings and she had this and that. If she is doing that, why can't I? Who is holding you? You can do whatever you want to do and demonstrate who you are and show who you are. If that is your model, if that is your example, good luck. For you, we are going to heaven here. Any candidate for heaven there? Of course. In that other church, their pastor encourages them. And he makes announcement. He gives cars to their head usher. And since you know that's what he do, what are you doing here? Why don't you go there and get your own car? Here we don't give cars to ushers or singers or workers. Here we tell people everything you have 
your strength, your talent, your ability belongs to God. Give unto the Lord the best thing that you have. That's what we teach here. And if you're looking for where they, you know, buy cars for this and buy this for that, during the end of the year, if you see what they do in that church, and then they send all these, uh, what do they call them, hampers or whatever, hampers, hangers, hangers, whatever. They, they, they send to everybody, and you know, our church here, only Bible, what else do you want? Our church here, only holiness, what else do you want? A person that is, uh, you know, giving everything is God to prepare you for heaven, or the other fellow that is get, bringing, bringing you all this that wants your heart to be totally riveted and pivoted and glued to this world. I want to prepare you for heaven. That's all I'm going to do, and the rest God will do for you. Yeah. And so Job there was nobody like him. He wasn't copying anybody. But here is where we're going. A perfect and an upright man. One that feareth God and is choice evil. Perfect. You will be perfect. You see Job there. He didn't copy anybody. He didn't wait for anybody. The perfection was there. Pursuing gracious perfection that you're pressing on to perfection look at chapter 2 chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 3 chapter 2 we're looking at verse 3 here it says and the lord said unto satan as thou considered my servant job that there is none like him in the earth a perfect and an upright man a perfect a perfect a perfect and an upright man now you know that perfection we're not talking of angelic perfection and we're not even talking about mental perfection look up here there is mental perfection. We don't have that. There is moral perfection. That's what he wants us to have. Mental perfection is when you know everything that God knows. Job did not have mental perfection. He did not know that all these boils came from Satan. He did not know that the fire that fell from heaven and destroyed his farm, he didn't know that that came from Satan. He didn't know that all the Serbians that went and destroyed all his property, he didn't know that that came from Satan. But it's Satan that went and did all that. He did not know that. He was not om omniscient, knowing all things. He did not have mental perfection, but he had moral perfection that, that's all god requires from you you won't know everything and you won't uh, be able to even understand everything when we're, we're sanctified we're purified and give the bible to that sanctified brother that sanctified sister and tell him tell him or tell her to explain to you uh, the chapter six or chapter seven of revelation and he reads all that he said uh, pastor i can't understand but to say you are sanctified, yes, sir, I am. Moral perfection, not mental perfection. And so there are people that say, okay, if you say you are perfect, then they ask us a question of uh, what took place a thousand years ago in uh, ancient history. And I say, well, I don't understand that. If you don't know all things, how do you say you are perfect? Well, it's not mental perfection, it is moral perfection. That's what it requires, and that's what we are pursuing. You are going to have it. I said you are going to have it. That's why it goes on to say that he's still perfect and upright, upright man, one that feareth God and is choose evil, and still he holdeth fast. Is integrity, although thou moved me against him to destroy him without a cause. And that's what the Lord is telling us. He's saying that perfection he wants us to have, will have it. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. And you'll find the word perfection in all these passages I'm reading to you. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, 
through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you, tell me, make me, read that for yourself now, from make, make me perfect in every good work to do his will. That's perfection. That you know his will. And you say, yes, Lord, I'll do it. I don't think I have all the strength, but I'll start. And when I start, you will help me through. He wants you to do something. Maybe you also say a word to somebody. You say, Lord, I'm afraid of that person to say the word. But because you told me to say it, I'm going to start. I will open my mouth. You'll fill my mouth. You'll complete it for me. That's the perfection requires that once you know his will, there's the willingness to do his will. And there is the eagerness to do his will. And there is the faithfulness that you want to do his will. And it says through the blood of the everlasting covenant, it will cleanse you. It will wash you. It will purge you. And then it will make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Walking in you is gracious. Is the one walking in you. It's not you just trying by yourself and just struggling all by yourself. If you go to God in prayer, Lord, you demand gracious perfection from me. The perfection that is worked out, the perfection that is effected, and the perfection that is produced by your grace. And you go to God, he will do it for you. I said they will do it for you. Walk in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Point number two now. Preparing and praying for gospel perfection. Now, if you didn't know something is possible, how do you prepare yourself? If you've never heard about it, how do you prepare yourself? If you do not know the importance of this, how do you prepare yourself? All you'll be doing is you'll be making excuses every time. When something happens, I will say, ah, ah, brother, this has happened again. Uh, Pastor, you understand? Nobody is perfect. Which Bible are you reading? Nobody is perfect. Job was perfect. Which Bible are you reading? Nobody is perfect. Enoch was perfect. Nobody is perfect. How do you know that? You must be perfect. He requires that. Cancel that excuse from your mouth. That he wants you to move on. He wants you to march forward. He wants you to go on unto perfection. And you tie yourself down every time. Nobody is perfect. That's why you're not preparing for that perfection. You'll prepare. You will pray. And that perfection, the Lord, will effect in your life. In Jesus' name. Let me remind you once again the goal. If you don't know where you're going, you'll not know where you reach there. If you don't know where you're going, you will not know how to prepare for that journey to reach there. Perfect. That means purified by the sanctifier. Perfect. That means emptied of self. Nothing of self. Nothing of self. All of you and nothing of me are is to be redeemed from all sin. He redeems us from all sin, external and internal. And F is to be freed, completely free from slavery. You are not uh, you know, enslaved to anything or anyone. There's no attachment that is so much in your life that you cannot give it up if the Lord requires it. And then E, you established the sanctification. C, you are committed and consecrated to, the, to his sovereignty. And T, you are transformed into a sage. It will happen. Preparing and praying for gospel perfection. We're looking at Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 2. Revelation chapter 3, verse 2. It says in verse 2, be watchful and strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die. For, for I have not found thy works perfect. 
before God. You see that there are people that uh, give you the idea that, uh, well, God doesn't even expect me to be perfect anyway, so why should I try? But here it says, I've not found your work to be perfect. Get up. What, be watchful and do something so that you'll be perfect before me. He expects it. He wants it. He requires it. And he says you prepare yourself and you do something what ought to be done. We're looking at Psalm 139. Psalm 139. In Psalm 139, I read here from verse 21. Psalm 139 verse Verse 21, it says, Do I not hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? I am, am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with what kind of hatred? Perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. What the psalmist is saying here is, I love what God loves. I hate what God hates. I love the people God loves, and I hate the people he hates. And David was saying, now, before you copy me, you must find out the reason why I do what I do. There are people that will say, you know, I'm following the Bible. I say, how? He said, look at those people in the Bible. They conquered all the people in Jericho and they destroyed the Amalekites. You know what? The Amalekites were enemies of God. And they were rigid. They were firm in their hatred. And their cup of iniquity had run over. And God said, those are my enemies, Joshua, go fight them. He has not given you that commandment. It is a, deep, it's a ministry for Joshua. It's not what he loved to do, what he liked to do. These are people that hate me and I hate them. Audible voice of God, I raised you up exterminate and wipe out my enemies. And the psalmist says, I hate the people God hates. You are not like that. Now he has given you a commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Look at the story of the Samaritan. And then the good Samaritan came and he picked him up. Why didn't he kill him? He doesn't have commandment to kill, to destroy. That's not his enemy. That day is past. That age is past. You find David coming to the battlefield. And here David comes and he sees Goliath. And Goliath is saying, I defy the God of Israel. He made himself an enemy of God. And he said, choose one person here. And here am I. If he fights against me and he wins, if, if he conquers me, then you conquer us. And when David came, David did not say, you offended me. You spoke against me. You insulted me. I'm going to fight you. And I'm going to destroy you. You are my enemy. No. He said, I come in the name of the Lord because